Are we okay? Can you hear me? We're good. It's uh, six forty-seven. Um, hmm. So yeah, if you just whenever you're ready to start, please go ahead. That sounds good. Just a second here. There we go. Uh, here's the title. Uh, this is the title of mine, uh, neither here nor there. Um, but I want to focus in my session on the role of the teacher. Uh, oh, before I begin, thanks to Paul and Phil and Joe uh, for this opportunity. Um, <clears throat> and also before we begin, one of my favorite quotes from a science fiction author, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed yet. Uh, in this uh, session, I'm not going to answer, will I have a job in, in the next five years? Uh, but <clears throat> I just want everyone to notice that, that you know, the, this uh, advancement will come at an irregular rate, depending on where you are. Uh, I do want to look at the role of the teacher here and uh, realize that there are different kinds of teachers and teaching. And some of those kinds will go away and uh, most will change, I think. Uh, it is disruptive. I think this is a, even though it's a very specific technology, it is generally can be used in many different ways. So I think it's a, as much of a revolution as the personal computer. And uh, I think it'll have wide ranging changes, uh, but not as quickly as some think anyway. Um, I want to deconstruct or uh, analyze all the different parts of what does a teacher do? What is the role? What other kinds of things we can do? And I do want to jump back to 2010, uh, which I think we ha is a similar situation. Um, <clears throat> in 2008, I attended the first MOOC. Uh, it was run by three Canadian professors. Uh, one of them was Stephen Downs. And uh, by 2010, it was really getting going, and they had uh, another Coursera was being developed, and, and they had hundreds of thousands of students studying all of a sudden online. Uh, and uh, Stephen Downs was thought, well, this was kind of silly because people were, uh, were saying this is the end of the university and, and uh, this will change teaching forever. Another thing that was involved was YouTube uh, was about five years old at that point. It was just starting to really uh, gain traction. And a man called Salman Khan started posting a bunch of videos about uh, mathematics and uh, to teach through YouTube. And so, again, those two things kind of came together. Everybody was kind of like they are right now, a lot like this. So Stephen sat down and he said, what does actually a teacher do? And can this YouTube or uh, MOOCs, can they actually replace a teacher like that? So let's look at those. The first role is the learner. And uh, as a teacher, you should exemplify how you learn to, to your students. And it's one of the most powerful ways you can do to teach. Another one is a collector. You find materials and bring them all together, uh, always on the outlook, uh, on the lookout for uh, new materials. The curators, once you get those materials, you organize them and put them together and get them ready to use. Uh, I call that uh, my arsenal of teaching materials, um, but uh, you are a caretaker in all of that. An alchemist is a person that takes uh, maybe one video of Taylor Swift and another video of heavy metal, and you put that together, the sound and the images, and mix them all up, and it makes a new video. So this alchemy is to use uh, materials that are there and then adapt them specifically for your needs. A programmer, I'm not talking about computer programmer here. Uh, this is to develop uh, courses. I, the perfect example is the syllabus. Uh, the teachers write a syllabus. <clears throat> Salesperson uh, is a person that talks. Uh, a professor, of course, professes ideas, uh, champion an idea uh, or a set of ideas. Number seven, a convener. People gets people together, put them together. That uh, perhaps is not so strong as a professor because those are uh, in class. But uh, in many other situations, you need to bring people together. Oops, all right. Coordinator, uh, organize groups, set expectations, logistics, kind of boots on the ground kind of uh, teaching. 
uh, aspect of teaching. A designer is to create spaces for learning. Now, this is either online or in the classroom. Uh, you have to build things uh, and uh, make it easier to learn. Coach. Now, coach is different from a trainer, but uh, the idea is to improve, uh, to get uh, creative synergy between people in the groups, uh, improve the group chemistry. But for individuals, you're kind of the guide on the side, but also you're in the quarter supporting uh, the the individual students and giving advice and uh, but always toward the team goals. And agitator is uh, to create an itch the learner has to scratch. I find that, uh, for example, in TBLT, uh, the the tasks that you create uh, that require uh, use of English language to be able to finish uh, is something like that. It's an agitator. A facilitator, uh, make it easier, comfortable, safe, lower the anxiety. Uh, and move the conversation forward. Don't let it stagnate, okay? And then just uh, work between uh, groups and students. Tech support. Now, tech support is not like, how do I fix my microphone? But it's to understand the needs of the students and make things possible where students are having problems. So it's not just technology, it's all the whole technology of learning language, which does not have to include machines. The moderator is kind of the opposite of facilitation. Facilitation, you get people to go up and run. This is kind of uh, putting a border uh, uh, and outside and to make sure that uh, everyone is working together and pulling in the same direction. Number 15, the critic, of course, uh, critical thinking, uh, you have to ask questions, evidence, logic, and uh, also give opinions and actually encourage that with the students as well. Uh, lecturer, okay, and that's uh, traditional. You uh, take a lot of information that make it uh, easy to understand, hopefully. But it could be teachers or speakers at a conference or even YouTubers. A demonstrator, this is one of my favorite demonstrators, uh, Bob Ross, he demonstrates how to make paintings. Uh, so yeah, it's just uh, a mentor. This is more of a personality trait uh, and uh, to get uh, followers or to uh, follow someone else and uh, mentor mentee is usually uh, something that is extracurricular in many ways. A connector. One that puts two different fields together, for example, education and technology you put together to make ed, ed tech. Uh, but also that means to find uh, new ideas and connects to old. Uh, so I'm connecting this old idea about uh, uh, MOOCs and things now to this new situation. So this presentation is an example. 20, theorizer. Uh, so you can explain and use generalizations. So we have inductive and deductive reasoning up and down the ladder, and it leads to different worldviews, uh, hopefully to challenge uh, students to uh, get out of their comfort zones and, and really think uh, beyond what they have been told. Um, the sharer, so you can share in class. Oh, I found this great new you know thing, or always uh, excitedly or telling good stories, that's also important. And evaluator. So it's more than just giving grades. There's also formative and summative. Uh, and it's talking about your own research as well as uh, even uh, how you uh, perform in class. So you evaluate uh, in many different directions, not just for the students. And the bureaucrat and where you contribute to the system. Uh, there's some kind of accountability. You keep records and statistics, all of those. So those are the 23 that he put uh, in 2010. And I thought, well, I read through the article. It's quite a long article, and I've got the link at the end. But that uh, article 
uh, it was hard to digest because there were so many uh, different uh, different roles. And so I thought, well, let's let's organize it and remix it. So in 2010, I took that and put it into categories. So the first category is the admin roles with the bureaucrat, evaluator, and programmer writing the syllabus. And materials development, those four there. and motivation now these categories i've kind of i just put together you might have different categories and here it should be convener not convener and conveyance lecture and demonstrate class management that's uh, my favorite category the one that i really like the best and uh, thinking and that's usually done outside of the class uh sometimes yeah inside but now that's 2010 and i thought well he's you know he he does things about educational technology not about language specifically so i thought why not in 2010 adapt that to my situation and so this will be a little bit narrow for some people uh, but that's my situation at that time was university in Japan. So I the administrative roles were pretty much spot on. Uh, the programmer became choosing the textbook instead of the syllabus oftentimes. But I wanted to add translator because uh, that oftentimes was necessary to do administration. Um, and... Materials development in 2010, I didn't do much curate, curation and there wasn't much uh, of alchemy going on. They're not making of new materials, but there was collection uh, for supplementary materials and there was some design. Uh, I added tape player in those days, basically a uh, personal tape player. You get up and read something out loud so that students could do listening uh, to replace uh, in a way. So motivation, uh, convener was not at all important. It was all kind of given uh, in required courses for students, connectors either. But you did have to sell the course and you did have to share information quite a bit. So that was important. Uh, conveyance, the lecturer and demonstrator were the same. A loud reader. Uh, again, uh, reading aloud was or something like that to use yourself as as a way to convey samples of english language uh in my case english uh, class management got really complicated uh i uh the agitator was not uh very much uh how do you say it culturally accepted uh in in japan uh so, but i did uh have quite a bit of l2 enforcer speak english not japanese uh, it became a, a manager of the textbook, uh, and uh, the tech, tech support was moved from motivation into class management. That, and thinking, not much change uh, from regular. Now, with chat GPT, we need to update these a little bit and, and <clears throat> look at what changes there might be because of chat GPT. So uh, I would think the administrator role, the bureaucrat will pretty much remain the same and the programmer as well, but the evaluator uh, will become much more important, I think. Uh, and it's not just evaluation of grades and things like that, but to evaluate, you need to really have a good feed on every one of your students and to be able to uh, help them more often individually than it is uh, by a class. And so your evaluation criteria needs to really up your game. Materials development is, I think, a key area that uh, ChatGPT will really help us quite a bit in making uh, materials. And you can curate uh, and put things together and design them. Uh, there will be a lot more freedom. Uh, I think textbooks authors uh might uh, be shaking in their boots now uh a little bit afraid uh extensive reading people uh i don't know if you're writing uh, any books for that uh 
students may be able in the future just to uh, put in a, a prompt and get their own extensive reading uh, on whatever subject that they need. They will need guidance, though. Uh, motivation. Uh, again, not much change there as far as motivation. Um, the uh, maintaining, uh, watching out for cross uh, multilingual use of chat GPT might be a, a something to look at. Uh, conveyance, lecture demonstrator. Um, the prompt engineer uh, is a person that shows students or teaches students, trains students how to use the prompt to get the best uh, information from Jet, Chat B, GPT. And so I think that will become uh, an important part of uh, teaching. Class management, I think coach will become a really, really important. It's it, focuses on the human aspects of learning. And I think uh, that's where uh, we're going to shine. Uh, to add a challenger instead of, uh, uh, and again, L2 enforcer will become important. Instead of text manager, it will become project manager. And of course, tech support uh, for use of chat GPT will also become much more important. Thinking, again, being the learner and showing your students what the learner is, I think will become much more important. So while I can't actually say what's going to happen with ChatGPT and how will it change the thing, uh, the, the environment in the future for teaching, I think if you kind of look at these roles and kind of adapt and think about these, that you can actually forge your way into the future, no matter what brings brings with it, so that you can find what uh, how to continue on and to be able to be able to use to teach. Um, I have some final thoughts here, but I th this would run another ten minutes, and I don't think I have ten minutes, so I'm going to stop here, and I'll leave these in the in the deck, and maybe we can think if you have any questions later. So I'm gonna run through all of these at the end and just say that the last slide here, I've got uh, a link to the slides and uh, links and uh, my website, uh, Edge of Call. And I'm also doing a course at ITDI Pro about using new technology. So that's uh, all for me. Thank you very much, Paul.